Today's lesson is about dashboards. The dashboards they are the ones that right away come up when you open up Autodesk. Like they have the, this one over here and that's by default is my work. Now let's say if you're the owner, there's a default dashboard that says owner. If you want to make that one the default tab to open up, you just kind of move it like I just did like there. And now that one is the main one. So you see there's a whole bunch of default ones in there. Sales manager, sales history. If you don't want one, let's say the sales history, that's something maybe you're not in sales and you don't want them. You basically click here uh, on the settings. Here's the tab settings. And that's where you have the option to delete the tab. Now, don't worry, there's also the tabs. Uh, if you want to delete them, you can easily get them back. I'm gonna show you where you can get them back. And some of you might already know that uh, some of these ones have been done where we did the ticket resolution tabs. We also created some dashboards. So there's some overlap in explanation. But to create a new dashboard, you click on the plus sign over here. And here you have the ability to start with a copy of a default tab. And as you can see here, my work is listed here. And these are all the default uh, dashboards that Autodesk comes with. So don't worry if you delete one uh, or you, you remove it. Uh, there's, there's already one that, that's come by default and you can easily access it again. And as you can see over here right now, nothing is all in there yet, but you can easily add them. The other ways that you can also do is that if you want to create a new tab, maybe you have a tab that's depending on uh, some stuff. Uh, you can also get a copy one. Here's the resolution metrics that was mentioned in the other video. You can copy one and then modify them as you would like. Let's say we're going to copy the one that says for uh, engineer. And then you can do that. Start with a copy of the default tab is also what I just showed you. You can even display a reopening existing tab if one was closed. But you can also say, I'm going to start with a blank tab and then you press next and that's going to be a new one. You have to give it a name. Uh, I'll say test. There's a group where you can also do it. In this case, we haven't added groups, but if you run out of space here, uh, right now it can only handle about 20 tabs here that's visible in the, in the screen. If you want to have more dashboards, you create new tab groups. You can easily press here on the plus sign. You give it a group name and you can group your dashboards in those tabs. The theme is basically the, the color. Uh, here you can see summer, this kind of color preference is here. And there's also this tab is here, position widget based on available space. So you can turn it on or off. Usually we leave it uh, a check mark. That's a good way because uh, that basically gives you a good uh, position on the widgets. Now here on the plus sign is also the tab level filter. And this is a little bit maybe difficult, but this is a very good one to know. So here on the bottom, you have the limit selections to either way. All mine of the log and resources were custom. So for example, what you can do, if you say, you know what, I'm going to put everything based, let's say on the resource, and I want to only see the, what's based on the resource. And now I say to only mine, meaning when I'm logged in, I only will see everything that's already filtered by me. So instead of making all the widgets custom by who's the user or who's the resource, in this case, you just make it as mine. And what I will do once you share this particular, these widgets, and they have also a dashboard that you can create, uh, they don't need to fill in their name. It just basically by default goes back to their resource. So it can make a, it can, you can become a general one. And then you can press finish. Now here we have a test one. Again, like I said, I can move it over here and we can add a widget. And we can create again new widgets. Again, this was already explained in another video too, but I'm going to quickly show you one. A good one is always start with a copy of one of your existing widgets you can do too. But you can also choose to get a widget from the widget library. Now, there's no pull down menus here because with these ones you just have to press on the next button and that's where it will present you a list of all the the tickets or the, in this case the widget are for the tickets in there here to easily group the ones that you want to pick they're right way over here and you can choose which one you want to have Let's see we're going to go for quotes for example and we only have a couple of them so quotes expiring by month say next and that presents you with the whole widget. Now, again, there's a whole explanation. Maybe we can go into detail on how this all goes. But you have a couple of visualization types over here where you can choose what you would like to do. Lines or you want to have the bars. And you can easily play with it. Once you have a, uh, a graph that you want to show, you can uh, later on always edit it. And I will show you. We're going to go by the default. And then later on, we can show what it, what it goes. So right now, I'm just using all the default data based here on the data and on the filters and on the options and everything and the layout. And I'll press finish. And that will present my widget. Now in this case, probably there's nothing here because I have the tab level filter and I just turn it off and I'll say refresh. In this case, probably there's nothing. You can go again on those little dots over here. You can go to settings. 
And again, we had a filter in here. So we had a current month as a dynamic range. Now I'm going to also delete that one just to kind of show you what it will do. And now you can see that there's some dates available. Since we work with a kind of a, a demo database, there was only data in there from May to 2013, I see. So that's why now it represents some, uh, some data. But again, this is how you can edit it. And now you can say, you know what, I'm going to want to move that Python to a different way. Now you can say, okay, well, let's do it in a bar section. And again, you press save and close. And this is a good way of kind of visualizing what you want to do. Start with kind of a, a basic widget that you have. Modify the items one by one. Don't modify too many things at the same time because then you might lose control of, of what has been changed. There's no way of reverting a change. So once you press on save, the widget is basically uh, as a default. You can't change it anymore. So be careful what you change. That's why I always suggest change one thing at a time and then from there you can move on. Settings also, uh, we have here on the filters, you can do a whole bunch of filters. You can see there's 10 filters. Each filter has a drop down menu with a whole bunch of items that you can select from. So there's a lots of opportunities and lots of items. Payment type, and then for example, uh, you get all those qualifiers. So it's equal, it's not equal to, but it can also be in the list. And for example, when you say it's in the list, you get here a, a pull down menu and you can say, okay, well, we're going to choose only these kind of items. I'm going to want to only have the ones that are check and company check. Again, I'm applying a special filter. If I press save and close, most likely nothing will pop up here. No data to display because I'm too limited on all the data that I'm putting in there. Again, you go to filters and you can just easily say, gone save and close and we're back to this one now from this uh, little dot menus you can also have the option to move it to another tab but you can also say once this one is completely done you can say now i'm going to offer this one i'm going to offer it to another resource and here you can select the resources that are also in the system you press one and then that particular widget will be offered uh, to that person when you press save and close you can also move it to another tab meaning another tab meaning another dashboard that word is a little bit uh, maybe confusing, but we call it the dashboards. Uh, Autodesk uses dashboards and tabs both together. And that's why they have the tab groups is basically the dashboard groups. Uh, let's say I want to have, uh, I started with a new empty dashboard that's called test. Let's say I want to move that one to my work, then I can now put it in my work and then I have it on that dashboard. That's way how you can also nicely regroup your dashboards. I think that's about it. Of course, you can add widgets. You have a, a maximum amount still of 12 widgets, depending on the size uh, that you choose on this particular page. Uh, the more widgets you choose, of course, the longer it will take a little bit to load. Also, the more data you have in there, the more difficult, like this kind of uh, graph, for example, since we have no filters in there, it needs to go look through the entire database to look for all the data. So make sure that you don't make those widgets too big by having all the data in there, because then it will uh, take a little bit more time to pull it up. And you will see it, for example, when maybe we go to, for example, the salesperson. As you can see, it needs to pull in a whole bunch of data. Right now, there's not too much data to display because they are limited. But as you can see, it, it does take a little bit of time to work on it. Now, also, for example, over here, uh, once you hover over this one and you say, I want to move this one around, this is a way how to move also those widgets in a particular order. So don't worry, the first one is going to be exactly the first ones. Once you have your widgets in place, you can easily drag and drop and move them around. Also, if you like something from this particular uh, default dashboard and you say this one I want to have on my work again, you move that one to another tab and you can do it over there. And the handy thing too is if there's space available, you can say I'm going to do a copy. Right now here you can say copy is grayed out because there's no space on this dashboard anymore. Uh, but to copy it and then use it again. So what I usually suggest to do is that you use this one, you say move to the other tab. And I'll just quickly show it to you guys. I'll move it to the test tab. Now I have it on my test tab. Here, because I have plenty of space, I make a copy. I'll call this one copy to make sure that I know which one. And now I move it back. Now, since this case, it's a widget that's from the default library, but it could be that you have a widget that you really modified specifically for you. You can create a new widget and copy it. But sometimes it's easy to find, hey, that's the widget I need. Uh, this is kind of what I learned. It's kind of a good trick to know exactly which you want to do. But of course, you can also start with creating a new widget and find the one labeled correctly from your, uh, your settings. And this one goes now back to salesperson. And then we have everything back in place. And now we have a copy. And again, we can go to the settings. And we can modify exactly how we want it from here. Also, remember, there's a, top, there's a refresh button. So in case you made some changes and you do, it doesn't pull in the data, 
There's also the refresh button that you can do over here. Now in this test uh, section two, once you can also go to the settings here, you can still go back to the tab settings and you can change the, the, the layout. So we chose the team summer. You say, you know what, I don't like it at all anymore. I'm gonna go with Aloha, that's still available. The tab level filter, you can also remove that one uh, away if you want to. And that's, now we have the change of color. So that's also all things still possible. There's several other dashboards in there. Like I said, you can make as many almost as you want, but then go here and create a new tab group where you can all manage them. I think this is a good overview of all the dashboards. Like I said, there's a lot of work to get into details on, on the dashboards. There's also a specific dashboard that you can create that can be run on a specific TV that you have in your office. Uh, that particular TV can be logged in with a resource and Autodesk has the great option that it can give you a resource that just shows that particular TV dashboard, can refresh that dashboard only so it can be presented on the TV and that particular resource doesn't uh, eat up a license of your Autodesk uh, usage. So that's a good way to create a, uh, a true dashboard uh, that can be presented on a TV, either way for your projects uh, department or for your service department. And like I said, create a new user for that one, and that can be assigned as a uh, non-licensed user, so you don't pay for that. Again, those are all the things that we have to mention about the dashboards. Uh, again, widget and dashboard is a lot more into detail, but you will figure it out. If you have any questions, of course, go to our Facebook group and leave a comment over there. Thank you.